This is the Marchant Silent Speed ACT Model 8M adding machine from 1938, built by the Marchant Calculating Machine Company. It's electric, and I have the original power cord. You like buttons? Oh, this thing got buttons. It has a full keyboard with columns for eight digits. A register up here showing what you typed in. The main register with 16 digits for displaying the answer. And an upper register with eight digits for counting. Then there's more buttons. These three down here. Plus and a minus over here. These arrow ones. These other arrow ones. A reverse. A stop. Auto. This thing came out in the 1930s when adding machines were a big deal. The biggest deal of all was the Burroughs adding machine. That thing was used for basic accounting and it had a printer on the top. You type in one number at a time, you pull the crank and it'll print it and add. This type of machine is totally adequate for adding up a list of numbers, but for multiplication it's not so great. On a Burroughs, if you want to multiply something, say by 5, you have to just type it in and turn the crank 5 times. It works, but it's really slow. To multiply something by, say, 375, the trick is you first multiply the number by 5, then you type the same number in, shifted one digit to the left, and multiply by 7, and then you shift it again and multiply by 3. It works, but it's pretty slow. This procedure was improved in machines like this Monroe Model L, which was built specifically for fast multiplying. The crank isn't a big down and up motion, but a smaller, spinny thing. It's faster and easier to do over and over. This kind of spinny crank was common on the old pinwheel machines, and even on the Curda! Remember on the Burroughs, to do a multi-digit multiplication, you need to shift the input to the left by one digit. You have to retype the same number again, which is annoying and takes a lot of time. But on the Monroe, this little wingnut thing here shifts the whole register over by one position. Smart! So on the Monroe, a multi-digit multiplication looks like this. Now how could this get any better? Well, one little thing is the electric motor. This here is an electric Monroe. You can plug it in and then you don't have to turn the crank yourself. You just push the buttons. There's no digital electronics in here. The electricity is used only to turn a motor which just turns the crank for you. The motor is really just a minor convenience. Now let's get down to business. The Marchant Silent Speed. You can just barely see the name Marchant on the side here. Sometimes on eBay people call it the Merchant. like. I'll buy that fur coat from a merchant. But it's not merchant, it's marchant. Like, I'll buy that fur coat from a merchant. Anyway, it's got all the same stuff as the electric Monroe models. You type the digits in, you hit the plus to add, you hit the minus to subtract. You can shift the digits with these arrow buttons. You can hold it down to shift more than one digit at a time. Or you can shift the thing yourself manually up here. The Marchant has an extra register which displays the number that you just typed in. And then here's the main register with 16 digits. This is where everything gets added into. And up here is the 8 digit counter register which counts your additions. We got three buttons down here to clear each register. The lower, the middle, and the upper. And this little guy blocks the lower clear button. I guess so you don't accidentally clear it when you didn't want to. My machine's a little bit jammed inside, so the digits don't always spin all the way back to zero. They don't always show the right answers for the calculations either, but I'll try to fix that up as best as I can with the little movie magic. This is all pretty standard so far, with one notable absence. There's no repeat switch. On a Monroe machine, you need the repeat switch to multiply, because you got to keep that number on the keyboard while you turn the crank over and over. But on the Marchant, the numbers pop off the keyboard as soon as you hit the button once. This means you can't do multiplication by adding over and over. You'd have to retype the number every time. That's your first clue that this machine has specialized hardware for multiplication. And it's right over here. Cast your eyes on the multiplication digits. You push one of these buttons 
and it multiplies the number on the keyboard. So if I want to do like one, two, three times five, I just do this. After you hit one of those multiplier buttons, the carriage moves over by one position. So if you're doing a multi-digit multiplication, you can just hit the buttons one after another. Like for this big multiplication, I type in the one number on the keyboard, and then I just push the digits of the multiplier one at a time right to left. One awesome feature of the silent speed is that it allows buffered inputs. That means you can type the next digit in a multiplication before the previous one is even finished. So if I want to do this multiplication, I type 55 on the keyboard, and then I push the 9 button a bunch of times, and it'll let you push the next 9 before the previous one finishes, so you can be sure that the next digit will start as soon as possible every time. These buttons over here change how the carriage shifts after multiplication. There's this button here, it says stop. You use this when your scarf gets caught in the mechanism and the gears are slowly pulling your constricted neck closer and closer to the machine. Sometimes people tell me I shouldn't wear a scarf when I'm operating a motorized adding machine, but my neck's cold. This man gonna scarf. This one says reverse. I'm not sure why you'd want this, but this swaps the addition and subtraction. So if the reverse is on and I hit plus, it'll actually do a minus. Maybe someone else knows why that's useful. There's one button left on this thing, and it's my favorite. It's the automatic divide button. Let's try to do this division. The auto divide makes it possible to do this division by only pressing one button. Check it out. This is even better than all that other stuff. You type the big number into the main register, and you add it in there. You should do it all the way over to the left so that you'll get as many decimal digits as possible in the answer. Now the answer is going to appear in the counting register, so clear that one, and then type the number we're dividing by into the keyboard. Now we're all loaded in there, we just hit that beautiful auto divide button. The answer appears in the counting register, and it's up to you to decide where the decimal point is supposed to go. Check it out, here's 1 divided by 3. Merchant's Marketing claimed that this thing could do 1,200 operations per minute. That would be 20 operations per second. I'm not sure exactly what counts as an operation, but for the 1930s, this thing would have been unbelievably fast. They say this basic design was the fastest desktop computing machine in the world from the 1940s until the 1970s. And it only got beat in the 70s by electronics. So I guess this machine represents the pinnacle of mechanical computing. There never was a faster mechanical computing machine, and probably there won't ever be a faster one in the future. I mean, why would anyone make this? It's about 80 years old, and here it is in my basement. I mean, my film studio. How can it be that a simple man like me managed to acquire one of the most sophisticated mechanical devices ever built? And I only paid $10 for it. So anyway, here's to you, the Marchant Silent Speed Model 8M. It used to be on top, but the world seems to have moved on. But now... With this antiviral YouTube video, maybe things will start to look up for you. Who knows, maybe in a few years we'll start seeing the silent speed in Instagram influencer posts. And I'll smile to myself knowing that I was in on the fad before everyone else. Someday when I'm ready to retire, maybe I'll sell this thing off and live the good life. I'm thinking 12 bucks.